Hello guys and welcome to episode 5 in my Go.4 tutorial series. Today we're going to have a look at custom signals. Yesterday I created the tutorial for Go.3.5. So if you want to have the custom signals for that, you can find it here on my YouTube channel, The Solar Train, and you just go here and check this video out. All right? You can download the source code on my GitHub page. The link is in the description. I have prepared some things in advance. We have a main scene, we have a player scene, we have a trap scene, and we have a label scene basically. And these three scenes are inside of the main scene. The first thing we will do now is to create a single ton for custom signals. Create a folder here called assets, and a subfolder shared, and then a subfolder custom signals. I right click the custom signals here, create a new script, and I'm going to rename this guy to custom signals. And if you press the end key, you can see that the CS is still there. And click on create. And we're going to open this file up. And before we continue, we're going to have a look at the Go documentation here. And this is custom signals as C sharp events. So what we need to do is first of all declare the attribute above the signal. And then we have to note that the name of the delegate needs to end with event handler. And if you want to pass in parameters, you just add them at the end. We can just copy this guy here. Close this guy down. And we're going to start by deleting everything in here. And let's paste this guy in. And we're going to update this guy now to be our own signal. So we're going to have a damage player event handler signal here instead. And just as the documentation said, you have to have event handler at the end. Let's save the file. Control S. Let's go to the go.editor. I'm going to go ahead to product. Product settings. Auto load. We're going to go to assets, shared, custom signals, and find our custom signal CS file and click on open. And click on add up here. And click on close. Save the main scene. I'm going to go to the player scene. I'll right click the player. I'm going to click here on attach script. I'm going to click on the folder, the scripts folder. I'm going to save this as player.cs and click on open. And click on create. Now we get some boilerplate code that I don't care about. Select everything and then delete this stuff. First, we're going to add the variable for our custom signals. Then we need to add the ready method in here as well, so we can initialize stuff. And here, we're going to get hold of our single tone. And this name here is the same name that you set up here in product settings for the auto load. So the custom signals name here must be equal to the name you set inside of the code here. So this is how we access the single tone. And to connect to the signal, we're going to type custom signals. And if we check in the custom signals file, we're going to grab hold of the damage player there. And we say plus equals, which is the new way of writing signals with events in Go.4. And then the method that we want to run. So let's add the handle damage player method in here now, like so. And we have the same signature here as we have here on the custom signals. We have the int there. In the same way, we need to pass in the int here because the method here needs to match the method we have here in the custom signals. We're going to need some more variables as well. We're going to have our health. And the only thing we're going to do here for starters is to say that our health is going to be minus equals to the damage amount that's coming in, like so. All right, I'm going to add some uh, movement code here as well. And I'm not going to go through this code here. There are many tutorials. We're going to add the code for the movement here as well. Go back to the go that editor now and save the player here. And the main scene is my main scene. So if I click on play now, the project is going to start. And we should be able to move the player around here. Yeah. Good. Next, we're going to go to our trap. We're going to right click our trap node. Click on attach script. And we're going to go here to the scripts folder and save this as trap.cs. And click on create. In here, we're going to add some variables at the top. We are going to have how much damage the trap is going to be inflicting on the player. We're going to have access to our custom signals. We're going to have access to the sprite here when the trap is sprung. This guy right here. So if I put the visibility on, we can see that the spikes go up. All right. 
Then we have the two sound effects here, spike up and spike down. And inside of the ready method, we are going to get the custom signal singleton here. And we're going to get the trap sprang sprite and those two sound effects as well. Go back to the Godot editor, click on area 2D, then go to node. And these are the built-in signals inside of the Godot engine. So these are not the custom signals. If we have a look at the player node, we can see that it's a character body 2D node. That means we are going to use the body entered and the body exited signals. I'm going to start with the body entered signal. I'm going to rename this to a bit more C sharp standard. Select all the text, right click and copy and click on connect. And underneath the other method, I'm going to say private void and paste this guy in. And if we have a look at the signature, we can see that it expects a node 2D, which most nodes derive from. So we're going to pass in our player and call it body. Like so. And inside of this guy, we're going to have a fail safe. And then we're going to add two more lines as well in here. We're going to set the trap sprung to visible, you know, when the spikes are going up. And we're going to play the spikes up sound effect. Let's go and connect the other signal as well. I'm going to go here to body exited, rename this to a bit more C sharp standard, select all the text, right click and copy and click on connect and type in private void, paste the guy in and then player body like so. And inside of this guy, we're going to have a fail safe to make sure that everything is all right. If not, we're just going to return out of the method. Then we're going to remove the trap sprang sprite so we can't see that the spikes are up anymore. And we're going to play the spikes down sound effect. We are not going to use the process method here. Now, how can we access the custom signals? In Go.3, we use the connect method, but we're going to do something different here now. So let's go to the documentation again. And we can scroll down here to signal emission. And we can see here if we have a custom signal, we have to type in signal name dot my signal to run the signal. What we have to do is simply to go to our custom signals. And inside of our custom signals, we have to emit the signal we want to emit. In our case, it's going to be the damage player signal. And we're also going to pass in the trap damage. So this is how we emit our custom signal. And just to get some feedback, we can go to the player script. And when the handle damage player signal is emitted, we are going to do a print here. And we can just pass in the damage amount here, like so. And let's open up the go.editor. And let's click on play. And when we now walk in the trap, we can see that we are taking damage here. All right. We can now do custom signals in code. I want to show you how to do custom signals in the editor now. So if we go to the player here and we can open up the player script. At the top, we're going to add the signal. And it's going to be update health event handler signal. And it's going to take in two arguments. We're going to pass in the health and also the position of the player here. Whenever the handle damage player signal is emitted, we are also going to send the signal from this script itself. We're going to go emit signal and we're going to signal our own update health signal up here and pass in the health and the position. Save the script now and go back to the go.editor. If you click here on player, we can see that the signal is not here. That is because you have to press on build first in order to see it. And then we can see that the signal pops up here. Next, we want to send the signal to our health label. And we need to add a script to this guy. So right click and click on the touch script. And I'm going to put it in the scripts folder and click on open. And click on create. Inside of the ready method. We're just going to say that the health is full. Now let's go back to the Godot editor and let's go to the main scene. And here I'm going to click on the player and we can see we have our update health signal. I'm going to double click on this guy and we're going to connect it to the health label. Rename this to a bit more C sharp standard. Select all the text, right click and copy and click on connect. And inside of the health label, I'm going to say private void, paste this guy in, and we know it's going to take in both health and also a vector 2 for the position, like so. And inside of here, we're just simply going to say that the text of this label 
It's going to contain health and the pass in health. And we're going to say lost position play was hurt and pass in the position. I'm just doing this as a simple example to show you how to send in multiple parameters. You know how to do that. And save the health label. Let's go back to the go.editor. And we can now click on play. And when the player now walks on the trap, we can see that the health is updated. And we can see that we get the lost position that the player was hurt. All right, guys, this concludes this tutorial. You now know how to set up a custom signal singleton where you can send signals in code and also how you set up your custom signals inside of the Godot editor. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and see you in the next video. Bye for now.